Hey everybody. In this video we're going to be looking at some old power supplies. This power supply here was just the power supply board. I don't even have the case to it anymore. This is an old D-Van Electronics power supply. Also known as a DVE power supply. This is a power supply that was manufactured probably in 1995. It's an old AT power supply. So I can't tell you the ratings on everything because I don't have the case to it. But I'm assuming this might be, I don't know, maybe a 150 to 200 watt power supply. AT power supply. This right here will see um, cables that went to the on off switch on the front of the computer. See, back in them days with the AT power supplies, the switch on the front of your computer actually contained mains voltage in it. And of course, nowadays with ATX, your motherboard controls the power supply, whether it turns on or not. But back in these days, when your computer was switched off, your power, your computer was drawn zero power. The power supply was completely off. That's because these old power supplies did not have 5 volt standby circuitry in them, unlike today's power supplies, which do. Anyways, this power supply came out of my mom's old Packer Bell Legend computer. I'm not, not even sure what model it was. It's so long ago. She got that computer in 1996. Had Windows 95 on it. That was my first Windows computer. And this is the original power supply. And of course, back in them days, sunk power supplies never quit. Now, of course, I understand correctly. AT power supplies also didn't have a plus 3.3 volt output. They just had your um, they had 5 volt and 12 volt and minus 12 volt and minus 5 volt, but no 3.3 volt. And I believe that was, of course, introduced with the ATX specification. But just anyway, just have a look at the build quality of this power supply. Now, keep in mind it's only like like 150 200 watts. So you see, we got our um, one of our inductors here on the secondary side. Normally, if, it, if let's say in a newer power supply that had a 3.3 volt rail, you'd see a second inductor up here. In many cases, by itself for the 3.3 volt rail. Look at the capacitors in this thing. These are caps on. Now, normally, when you see caps on, you're thinking, no, that's not good quality. But remember, back in 1995, all these brands didn't have the problems they have today with the flawed electrolyte formula. Back in the old days, these caps here were liable. Anyways, let's keep looking. Here is the um, middle of the power supply between the primary and secondary um, heat sinks. Here's a transformer. Not that big, because remember, it's only like a 150 200 watt power supply. You got a big old 5 watt resistor, 40, yeah, 5 watt 47 ohm resistor. And here's another transformer. I believe that's a um I believe I know what's sort of the same purpose as an optocoupler. Obviously it's not five, a five volt standby transformer because it's an AT power supply. Let's keep looking here. Lots of resistors and have a couple ICs here. Obviously control ICs. Probably PWM controllers. We have two main switchers. And there's still so much dust on these things you can't see the model on them. I see NT2625N. Usual when you have two switchers like this, they're identical. Or at least what I've seen anyway. Have a look on the primary side. There's the primary caps. These are, I think, Tosin brand. T O S I N. That's what it says. I can get a rating on them. They're probably 330 microfarad caps, something like that. And this one does not have a bridge rectifier, it just has four diodes, which back in these days, that was plenty. Because, of course, the power supply itself didn't draw that many amps. Look at this big primary loan filter. There's an X capacitor there, and there's an X capacitor there. Got two Y caps, of course, that's. Pretty much the standard for the EMI filtering. And 
we have MOVs are crammed behind these two primary caps. So that's probably the first AT power supply you guys have seen on Q Computer Channel. I actually got one kicking around. I used to have more. I actually have some upstairs. I, I do have a couple of computers upstairs. I need to bring them down and actually do a video of them one time. But I'm going to set this to the side. Move on to the next power supply. This one's from 1999. You know, a compact. Presario. That my grandpa bought, let's see, in December 1999. Had Windows 98 on it. Had a Slot A Athlon AMD processor. I think it's a 500 megahertz. Here's the cover for the power supply. This one actually has the compact brand on it. But it is a Delta. 250 watt power supply. Max output power 250 watts. There is the ratings. Pause view specs. Alrighty, have a look at the inside of this thing. Look at the build quality of this power supply. It's built extremely well. It looks like it's all Japanese capacitors in this thing. They're all Kimikons. There's your primary side. Got two white caps here, a bridge rectifier, two MOVs. Two Kimicon 200 volt 470 microfarad caps. Got a humongous resistor here. There's a 15 watt, I think, 2 ohm resistor. So, not very much, not too much of a resistor. You could easily heat that up with some current. There's one X cap there, and there's another X cap there. Those are white. So they could easily get confused with the resistor back there because they're the same color. This power supply has, okay, there's two more Y caps. They're on the receptacle here. The fuse is actually not soldered in. It's in a, um, it's in a holder, so the fuse is replaceable. A lot of old power supplies are like this. Surprisingly, those Dynapower USA cherry red power supplies I got actually have fuses in a holder like this and they're not actually soldered to the board and of course this power supply is an ATX probably the very first um, probably the very first revision of ATX there's no ATX 12 volt connector on this thing that was before this is before that time it's a minus 5 volt unit it's 5 volt heavy and 2.3 volt heavy Has a little add-on board here with some extra components, including, I believe, in, yeah, including a fan controller. There's your two heat sinks, good size heat sinks. I'd say very well built for a 250 watt power supply at this time. And of course, you couldn't really po power <clears throat> a P4 system with this very well because it's not because most of the power is directed to the 3.3 and 5 volt rails, but if you have an older AMD Athlon XP system that does not use the 12 volt rail for CPU power, you could probably use this to power it just fine. The way it's designed, very well built unit. Now I'm actually going to hang on to this one because it's a good testament of Delta quality, at least back in them days. And of course, there's that DVE power supply again. Now I'm going to show you guys one more power supply that's actually manufactured by um, it's actually manufactured by Light On but it has the compact brand on it. It's a very different power supply I should say. And here is the last power supply I'll be looking at in this video. It is actually a proprietary model for compact. It comes out of a Despro EN system and trust me I found out the hard way that this is a proprietary power supply. This power supply actually went on the Q Computer Plex, the Q Computer Company's first ever machine from 2006, the very beginning of Q Computer Company. And 
He originally had also had the original compact Death Pro motherboard as a Pentium 3 socket 370. And that and to see December December of that year I decided I want to upgrade the power supply to something a little bit better because I was gonna be adding some things to it. So I got a cheap Coolmax power supply off of I think Newegg. And of course I was new to computers. Only I had I had less or just right around a year of experience just out of a basic computer engineering course. And here's the trick with this power supply. It's a 24 pin. And it uses the same 24 pin connector as modern day 24 pin power supplies do. Now the 24 pin on this power supply is not the same kind of 24 pin that is used in modern day power supplies. I mean obviously, you think about back in 2001 I mean, I'm not even sure if they were even making 24 pin, pin power supplies yet. Maybe for servers, but not for desktops. But, this connector, actually a few of the pins are responsible for, for controlling the fan inside the power supply. The fan inside this power supply is controlled by the motherboard. It's very different. Which, by the way, this power supply does not use standard color codes. It's all proprietary for compact. And I tell you, this is most of the, these com, these computers were old CMS school computers, and they got donated to the computer engineering department at Hopewell High School. So everybody was really confused in terms of you know the power supply color codes because everybody was working with these things, and there were quite a few times where people fried motherboards and power supplies in the class because of this proprietary design. So basically, as I mentioned, um, I installed a Coolmax power supply, and not knowing any better, I used I it was a 24 plus it was a 20 plus 4 pin connector, and I bridged it together as a 24 pin, plugged it to the motherboard, and as soon as I hit the switch, I fried the motherboard. And I mean, smoke, literally. And then uh, later, I realized that this is a proprietary power supply, and the motherboard was proprietary. So you basically had to use this power supply with that motherboard. So I'll, I'll actually donate this power supply to Google Computer Works, but we're going to have a look inside of it. Anyways, again, there's a look at those um, colors of the wires on this connector. Just to give you a general idea, they did use red for plus 5 volt, but they used orange for plus 12 volt rather than yellow. And you have a look here we have a green wire here but normally on an ATX connect you see green next to black meaning that's the signal that turns on the power supply so I'm beginning to think that everything is all jumbled up on this power supply and Dell had some power supplies like this too back in the late 90s now of course this computer was from 2000, 2001 or so I'm going to assume the power supply was made in 2000 we have all sorts of different color codes on these wires. That being said, let's go ahead and open it up. But first, I'll show you the spec label again. Pause view specs. Now, before I actually open it up, just notice here this power supply is big. It has a 92 millimeter fan in it rather than an 80. And of course, the compact Death Pro EN systems not, were not only proprietary in the wire designs, but they're also proprietary in the size. There is almost a complete centimeter of difference between a standard HTX power supply and this thing. Now it's going to pop that cover. This is, like I said, I mentioned, it's a light on manufactured power supply. And it's built very well. These power supplies, I mean, the computers that were in, let's see, in 2009, many of them were still in service. At least I had many still in service. They, they just never quit working. Okay, I got the cover off. There's a lot of dust in this thing. This is a light on manufactured power supply. 200 watt power supply. Here's your main transformer. Obviously, it says light on. That's usually how you can find out the brands of these things. Sometimes you'll have the brand actually printed on the top of the transformer. 
There's a primary cap. So those are Kimicon, 200 volt, 4 cylinder microfiber caps. There's a bridge rectifier. You see there's an X cap behind it where it says Rev 08. And there's a humongous long, uh, long coil. The other X capacitor is up against the receptacle. That green thing down there is the NTC thermistor. And look, there's the MOVs. Right there next to one of the primary caps. And look at the size of those Y capacitors. They're huge. You can see one through the vent there. Probably some of the biggest Y caps I've ever seen in a power supply. I mean, they're extremely huge. Anyways, let's keep looking. There's the main secondary side inductor. Next to that is the 3.3 volt inductor. They're both huge. I mean, this is a 200 watt power supply. Now, of course, back in them days, you could you could you could easily understand the 3.3 volt inductor being big because a lot of the power went through the 3.3 volt rail. Of course, it powers a penny of three. And look at the size of the capacitors in this thing. Now, many of them are so dirty you can't really read the ratings. But some of these are Kimicon. I see some Panasonics in there. And I even see a Rubicon back there. These power supplies were built like tanks. I mean, we never had any failures out of, failures out of them. And, of course, Lidon still builds their power supplies like this today. I mean, I, you can go on my channel and there's a video where I actually do a little inspection of a Dell 350 watt power supply. I come out of a Dell Dimension 8400. It was a light on 350 watt unit and it was also built like a tank. Very heavy. But anyways, this wraps up my little video of some old power supplies. This will show you the build quality on these old things. Just how well they're built. It amazes you. Now, of course, this one here is so filthy you can't really see everything that good, but you could you can get a decent idea. I mean, you compare you compare this to how a lot of OEM power supplies are manufactured nowadays. It's ridiculous. The old OEM power supplies were built like tanks. Anyways, any questions or comments? Feel free to ask, and thanks for watching.